Great lesson for you today, guys, all about chipping. Five things that you should do to become a good chipper. And tips number three and four, we can all do without any excuse as well. Right, first one, all about a little bit of technique, this one. And it's all to do with what I see with when I'm giving lessons to people out on the golf course, down at the driving range, or even when I'm just playing with friends, I see a lot of wristy, golf actions when we're chipping and sometimes if you time it right it can work well other times it's not and what i mean by that is that as you're faced with a little chip here you might be using your lob wedge you might be using an a time for a chip and run whatever it may be but because of that thought of oh i'm hitting a chip shot the idea of getting a little bit of flight on it comes into our minds so then we start to think oh right well i need to try and help the golf ball up so as you're making the golf swing here what we tend to do is use the wrists to throw the club head down at the golf ball and unfortunately as i'm doing that what i run the risk of is getting a poor impact either with the leading edge or I get the leading edge buried into the ground early, or it hits the equator of the golf ball. And what I mean by that, if we just demonstrate that one for you here, everything looks good in my setup, but as I come through it, I get this shot where it goes topping and goes firing across the green now, and ultimately, I'm actually left with another chip shot, and I'm probably gonna be pretty scared of it because I've just done that on my previous one. Real simple drill for you. Now, I'm gonna use this doing a coat hanger. You don't have to use a coat hanger. If you haven't got one, you can do it without one. But all I want you to do, place the coat hanger up the grip like so, so it sticks out a little bit and creates a nice straight line. As I then take my grip, we can see that the hand, the grip and the coat hanger all become one unit pretty much. And what I want to try and do here, when I make my poor stroke and throw the club head down at the golf ball with my wrist, notice now the coat hanger has come away from my front arm, my lead arm here. And that is gonna result in those poor contacts. What I want to try and do at the start, just feel it press ever so slightly against my lead arm. From there then, I want to make some strokes, just trying to feel I keep it on that lead arm there. Because what'll happen then is the head lags behind my hand ever so slightly. And it just means now that my body has to do a little bit more work and start to turn. So ultimately then, I'm gonna get a nice little contact down at the ground because the club is approaching at the right time instead of throwing it early and getting out of sync. I get my body and what I'll be able to do ultimately is get a better strike. Like I say, it might be 56 degree lob wedge that you're doing with this. Even if you wanted to go into a chip and run shot with an eight iron, like I said a minute ago, you don't need the coat hanger. All you've got to try and feel is that as you would take just your front hand as you're doing this, all you want to try and see is that the club head now is slightly behind the hand as you're making the stroke and just keep it that way because the body starts to turn and you get that nice little graze of the turf down at the bottom as soon as you throw it you don't know where that impact's going to be so once you've had a few of those normal setup and just try that feeling keep the lead hand your front hand in front of the club head let the body turn and there we just pop it out a really nice strike ball goes tootling up towards the flag and I've got a good crisp strike all just trying to control what I'm doing with that lead wrist let's take a look at tip number two tip number two a tip that we can all do and it's something that if you've got a little bit of instinct in you which you will have grown over years and years you're going to be good at already without even knowing this think of this little shot that I've got here now if we just look down where we want to go towards I've got a little bit of a hill to come over, then I've got a bit of green to work towards. And if I said to you, I want you to throw this golf ball for me to that flag over there, you would have a pretty good idea. Now, whether there were obstacles in the way, if there was a bunker here, if you were further back off the green, if you wanted to run it up the slope a little bit more, you would throw it in a different manner. So for me here, as I throw this one, I can see a bit of undulation, so I'm not gonna roll it out down low. I'm probably gonna try and pitch it halfway and then let it run out like so towards the flag and do you know what? If that was my chip shot, I'd be really happy with that. So think about that when you actually get to your chip. If you were stood here and then you thought to yourself, well, how would I throw this golf ball now that is down on the ground towards that flag? 
again, instinctively, you've got a pretty good idea. And this is where I see a lot of amateurs go wrong. They get into a scenario, they think, ah, it's chipping time. Let's get the 60 degree out. And it might not be the case because that shot is gonna go up in the air and go running. So whenever you get to the green or near the green next time and you're thinking about your chip shot, ask the question, how would I throw this golf ball to that flag? For me there, I know that I wanted to throw it about halfway up the green with a little bit of loft, not a, a massive amount. I don't want it flat and running. I want it somewhere in the middle. So I've got my 56 now, not my most lofted club. And I'm gonna try and emulate that throw that I just made a moment ago. It's popped out a little bit higher and a little bit further. And you know what? It's not a bad shot at all. All because instinctively I knew how I wanted to get that golf ball there. So instead of getting there panicking and just reaching for that 60 degree, think about it. Ask yourself the question, how would I throw this golf ball to that hole? If you can do that, you're gonna to start to become a better chipper because you're building a picture in your mind of what you wanna do. Tip number three, understand the sweep instead of the lift. And what I mean by that is a lot of people try and lift their chip shots up. They get to a scenario where they're in something like this, there might be a little bit of rough, there might be a little bit of undulation, we've got a bit of distance to go towards our flag and we think, right, gotta get it up in the air, I'm chipping, get it up, 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 up. And it's not the case. We need to actually sweep the golf ball a little bit more. And what I mean by that is, Imagine if I weren't going to make a normal golf stroke now, if I were just going to try and lift this golf ball up, I would place the club here next to the golf ball and I would try and lift it up like so. Did a pretty good job there that time. The chances of me repeating that over and over again are pretty hard and I would imagine it would be pretty erratic where my shot dispersion would go as where well. if I did something slightly different, if I understood sweeping the golf club along the floor, if I've gone to my bag already and picked a lofted golf club, I've got half of the problem solved because this face now is already looking up towards the sky. So if I sweep it along the floor and the ball comes into contact with this face, it's going up in the air, real simple. So when you're down on your practice chipping green, I want you to just have a go of sweeping the ground like so. And just watch what happens when you get a ball in the way. I'm obviously not gonna get it all the way here, but if I were to just sweep that, look how it pops up. And that was me rubbing the club along the floor for a couple of feet. I've managed to pop the golf ball up onto the green. So if I can try and do that when I'm actually chipping a little bit more, if I can get more of a sweep instead of a lift, the loft of the golf club is gonna do the job for me and get this ball actually out towards our target. So when you're practicing now, imagine sweeping the grass. Don't try and lift the grass up out of the ground as you're coming through it, try and sweep it. Imagine you're trying to bend the grass towards the flag that you're chipping towards. Don't lift it up over the flag. And once you start getting used to feeling the club just brush along the floor and being a lot shallower, even on your poorer strikes, you'll start to see that you get a lovely connection the loft of the club will do the lifting part for you. You'll just do the sweeping and get the good strike, which will get your distance control, it'll get your spin control, and it'll get your better directional control. So think about that a little bit more. Sweep it, don't lift it. Guys, before we get into the next tip, I hope you're enjoying the lesson. Hit that like if you are. I want you to get better at golf. Remember, subscribe button down there, totally free to do. Let's carry on with the lesson. Let's get you chipping like you should be. Let's get into the next tip. Fourth tip, one that we can all do as we're going through our chipping process, and that's understand the surface that we're about to chip onto. Now, you might not be the best chipper yet, but what you can start to do is understand what the journey of the golf ball will look like as you actually hit the chip before and also after the chip because that could save you a few putts as well. A lot of people I see when I'm out playing with them when we get onto the golf course is they get into a scenario where they might just be off the green like so, they see the flag here and they go, ah, flag that way. I'm going towards that flag so I'll just chip towards that flag. Now, 
what might happen is you might have something where the ground is really shooting away from you here it might be that there might be a right to left embankment a left to right embankment you might be uphill one of the other scenarios We've got a lot of dew and water on the green here this morning because we're out early in the morning. So that's going to slow the golf ball down. So when you're out chipping and you're thinking of the shot, yes, you've got the technique aspect to get right. But what we want to try and do is just think a little bit about, well, where's the land lying? Because you might make a great chipping action, but unfortunately you've hit it straight at the flag and it's a two foot right to left putt. And all of a sudden it swings away and then from there you're not going to be holding that putt because it's going to feed away from the flag so when you're out here just take a moment stand behind your golf ball and think well again think back to that throwing one we talked about how would i throw it to the golf hole what's it going to do when it actually gets on the green for me here now it's wet it's swinging a little bit right to left so i'm going to aim this about half a foot outside the right it's slightly downhill so i'm going to land it shorter than i normally would Oh, I've caught that a little bit chunky, but I had a good idea of what I wanted to do. Let's give it one more go, see if I can get the right chip here. Same line, little bit further on. That's more like it. We see it running now and it's actually turning in towards the flag and just stopped a little bit short. So be aware, and like I said a moment ago, once you've hit your chip, and even if it's going by the hole, don't turn away and not think about it and put your club back in your bag. Have a look, if it's gonna go racing by, see what it's doing. Is it moving a certain way? Have a look at what that's doing because you're gonna face the same thing coming back. So if it swings, you'll see it. You'll already get a read of what that putt's about to do. So have a look at the fifth and final tip that's gonna be the one that helps you be a better chipper. Fifth and final tip. It all comes down to commitment and it comes down to a bit of practice. Now the practice part's all on you. You've got to go down to your chipping green, down to the driving range, wherever it may be, and do some work. Commitment wise, what I mean by that is that when I get out to the golf course and I see my friends chipping, because A, they probably haven't practiced that much, they lack a bit of commitment and conviction in their golf swing. So in a scenario like this where, you know, for the average golfer who's playing a lot of golf, who's a decent chipper, this would just be their bread and butter. They think, right, just chip it up there, no problem whatsoever. But for someone who struggles with chipping, there's a lack of commitment because all of a sudden now, this slope that's out in front of us, that's gonna start to scare me because I think, oh, I've gotta get that up over there. Oh, don't duff it into it, don't thin it into it. And that doesn't give me those committed feelings. So when you actually start to go and work on your practice what i want you to think about is a committed and a confident swing and it will look more like this as opposed to something where it's changing speeds really aggressively from like an acceleration to a deceleration or really slow acceleration to a rapid acceleration through the golf ball. We want some consistency and we want a committed back and through, back and through, try and keep the tempo the same. Gravity, centrifugal force are gonna give you a little bit of acceleration as well anyway. What we don't want is dramatic changes in your pace as you go through any chipping stroke. So as you stood over it, in your practice swings think of that commitment we know that we want to try and keep the left wrist a little bit firmer we know we want to brush the floor a little bit more i know how i would throw it and i know how the green's going to run let's just commit to the process there we go nice rhythm commit to it and then as you come in pick that spot stand over it and even if it doesn't work out as long as you're stood here committed the chances are you're going to hit a better shot bit like that one because I was committed to the swing it didn't look really short and slow or long and fast it looked committed it looked confident because I've been working on my chipping I've used those five tips guys I hope you've enjoyed the lesson as well if you want more chipping tips check out one of the videos down here for a little bit more help on that as well remember hit the like button subscribe to the channel for more free golfing lessons and I'll see you in your future golf lessons